morning everyone so I'm gonna get going on the 461 here meteor piston okay this is your stock cylinder notice the intake it's funny this intake's actually a little wonky there's your transfers lower transfers I'll pay attention to all these shapes and uh, when I'm done I'll show you what I did okay stock there we go hey everyone how's it going um, little update got my grinding done on the still MS 461 pretty happy with uh, how everything turned out we won't know how it runs of course until uh, until we run it. I want to give a little shout out to uh, Kenzie, Bayou Country Power Saws. Uh, he hit 2k subs uh, last week I think. Um, if you've never been to his channel go check it out. He's a good dude. He's a friend of mine and uh, if you think I know about saws uh, that guy teaches me a lot of things. So congrats Kenzie on two, 2k subscribers. You earned it, buddy. Hope you keep going. Uh, I hit 500 this week, which is crazy. Um, it's awesome. Thanks for coming. And uh, hopefully I can keep the party going here. Uh, let's let's get a close-up of this uh, cylinder. I'm sure you guys don't want to stare at me on. Okay, first thing. So, here's what I'm dealing with here, folks. I think everything's here. I've never had this saw together. Okay, I bought this at an auction, completely apart. Um, there, have a look in here. My bench is a pig style. That's the first thing I'm going to do before I put this together. All the little nuts and bolts are uh, in there. Um, broken fin on the uh, flywheel right here. So I broke one off on the other side, directly across. Um, we'll see how that works out. If it doesn't, I'm sure this thing's worth about $6,000. But <laughs> So there you go. Just showing you guys what I run into. Um, yeah, I got the handle kind of mocked up. I, like I said, I've never had this thing in one piece. I clean up the plastics. Little ding there. They're uh, they're pretty nice though. So same thing, ding there. Handle's got most of the paint on it. Um, I got a couple of mufflers. I'm probably gonna run this aftermarket muffler. It's uh, wide open. I like that. Where this is the uh, that's the stock muffler. It's got this baffle system in it. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of that. We'll see though. I'll try both. But uh, I tend to port my saws so that they would like to breathe. Okay. You guys want to see porting and talk about it. Um, so, first thing, I deleted the base gasket. That took, my, uh, that took my squish, which is the space over top of the piston, in between the squish band and the piston that took my squish down to about 20,000 which is exactly where I want it okay so what did I do okay I opened up the lower transfers a little bit there's not much I can do with this saw maybe other people have ported these they're probably laughing at me right now but this is what I know okay I can only feed it from here and this pretty much lines up with that so um, there's only so much room. I don't really want to grind on the cases and trench the cases at all. I need this ceiling surface. So she feeds from there. And so I tapered this a little bit more. Did a little bit of shaping in the center. Okay. In here. A little bit of shaping in there. A little bit of shaping around in here. And then just kind of open it up just a little bit. Give it a little bit more of a taper. Upper transfers, you can't even tell I was in there. 
okay I just moved them up a little bit to correct my blowdown okay remember okay piston comes down this opens exhaust comes out there you want the exhaust to get pretty well escaped before these open okay um, we can go into this a little further at a later date but so all I did with this is correct my blowdown okay which is when what I'm calling when my upper transfers open notice the shape of those which way do they face okay I did do a little bit of reshaping that is not always necessary but uh, the more radical you go in your numbers, the more chances, in my opinion, that you're going to have to do upper transfer work. So remember that. When you're first starting a port, just go a little bit. And I mean, you're, you're talking, you're talking, when you're grinding, here, here's two quarters. That would be a lot of material for raising the exhaust height, okay? So just think of that. Two quarters is probably more than I raise this exhaust. Okay, there's your upper exhaust. There you go. I might smooth this a little bit more. I don't smooth these for performance. I smooth them so that carbon doesn't stick. Okay. Um, it's pretty shiny. I more I more want symmetry in my ports. Okay, and another thing. Very important, don't make that flat. If that's flat, the ring's gonna come through and it's gonna grab right there and you're gonna chip this whole cylinder or you're gonna break your piston and your ring and lock your saw up, okay? Those little swirls in that that you see in there, that's just, uh, that's just from cleaning it, okay? So make sure when you shape these, you want the center higher, okay? So that your piston gradually goes in. I know that looks flat on video, but it's not. Look. Okay. This side. Here's my intake. This is how I do them. They're rough on purpose. Okay. Some people like them smooth. Some people like them rough. This is on purpose. This is not... This is not for me being lazy. This is how I do my intakes. And they work. If they didn't work, I wouldn't do them this way. That's just how I feel about it. Okay. Did some reshaping on the intake. Um, if you're just starting out porting um, that shape, don't 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 mess with that. That's uh, that's a lot of work to do that. So. Oh, I just about dropped the cylinder and that would have been the end of this. Okay. So there's there's my ported 461 cylinder. Okay. You can barely tell I was in there. And that's that's what you want. Okay. I, I, less is more, guys. Remember, if I'm not happy with this cylinder, I'm gonna, here. There you go. Flip you back around. Remember, less is more. I've never ported one of these. A lot of guys have. I'm sure um, I don't go online and look for recipes when I port saws never I look at the saw I time it and I decide what I'm doing from there that's just me um, it's more fun if I don't know what's gonna happen and often I'll learn something if I don't know so okay so there's your ported cylinder um, it'll probably take me three, four hours to get this thing together and running. Hopefully I'll have it running this week. Um, brake band spring is broken. Um, when that clutch bearing, when the clutch bearing let go on the side, it got rattly. And I think what happened is the clutch, I don't know if you can see that. There's a wear pattern here. Okay. And here. See if we can see that. In here, there's a wear pattern. I think that clutch got so wobbly, she uh, wore a hole and caught this brake spring. 
So um, if I fire it up and it doesn't have a brake band, uh, I'm still waiting for parts, but um, it is what it is, right? I want to get this thing running and test it. I will use it. I will use it gently with no brake band. Um, I'll just do some bucking and stuff like that. Another thing I was thinking about. This is a limited coil. This is a non-limited coil or unlimited coil. Okay. I think this is a 440 coil. I might actually try the unlimited coil. I don't know if it's necessary. Um, I typically don't spin my saws up high enough that they're going to bounce off a rev limiter. Um, I build them to be faster in the cut. Uh, max RPM. I don't, I'm not really too worried about that. But just, just letting you guys know what's going on. So that's where I'm at. Um, go check Kenzie out. Buy your country power saws. If you've never been there, go there and say hi. He's a good buddy of mine. And uh, I think you'll like his channel if you've never been there. And uh, anyhow, 500 subscribers. Really appreciate it. We're going to keep on trucking here. I promise you, I don't know everything, and I'm going to blow some stuff up along the way, but she's going to be a ride, so. <laughs> As always, thanks for watching. Take her easy.